Visual Studio 2017, Session 8, The Web. I'm Michael Washington of the AIHelpWebsite.com, the LightSwitchHelpWebsite.com, and the HoloLensHelpWebsite.com. On our agenda today, we're going to cover JavaScript services. We'll create an Angular 2 JavaScript services project. We'll demonstrate live editing. We'll demonstrate how you can edit the Angular code without reloading the web browser. We'll demonstrate how to add external libraries. Uh, particularly, we're going to cover using PrimeNG, and we'll show how to update the Webpack configuration. We'll also add a database and entity framework to the project. First, JavaScript services. JavaScript services is a set of technologies that provides an infrastructure that makes it useful if you're using Angular 2, React, Knockout, or other JavaScript frameworks. It allows you to build the client-side resources using Webpack. First, JavaScript services. So what we'll first do is create a Hello World data folder on our Windows machine. We'll type CMD so we can go to the command line and we'll install the JavaScript services package. After it installs, it'll show you the various templates. The template that we're going to use will be the Angular template. So to execute that, we just write uh, .NET new Angular in the folder, and a project will be automatically created. Since we have Visual Studio 2017, we can just double click on the csproj file and it will open in Visual Studio. It'll take a while for the node packages uh, to be refreshed, so be prepared to wait uh, three to five minutes for that and you'll see a little animation there while that's happening. When it's complete, it'll indicate in the output window that it's been complete. Now at this point, we can just go to debug, start without debugging, and it'll build again, of course, and then it'll, it will open the application in our web browser. External libraries. To demonstrate integrating an external library with JavaScript services, we will look at using PrimeNG, which is a free open source uh, component. We'll first open the package.json file and we'll add um, PrimeNG as well as Font Awesome, which is uh, a dependency uh, that PrimeNG has. Next, we'll go to the webpack.config.vendor file and we'll add the elements that we need from Font Awesome and PrimeNG. The reason why we're putting them in the vendor file is the vendor file is not compiled each time you do a build. This allows the builds to go faster. We'll also add uh, GIF to the rules because that's a dependency that PrimeNG has. Also, at this time, PrimeNG does not support the pre-rendering that um, Angular offers. So to turn that off, the main tag in the view and the index.cshtml file is just simply changed to just app loading and we close the tag. Normally this tag would have uh, pre-rendering um, configuration elements. So to turn those off, we just change the tag to look like you see here. As I mentioned, the vendor file is not compiled each time so that whenever it's altered, you have to compile it uh, manually. So to do that, we just drop to the command line and we type uh, webpack config um, and indicate the vendor file. So once it's compiled, you don't have to worry about doing this again unless the vendor file configuration is changed. Now we can implement some prime ng code. So we'll add a new folder called prime. We'll have a prime component uh, HTML file. And you'll see there's some markup there. The p growl um, and the p button are prime ng uh, elements. 
in the component file, you'll see at the top we're importing uh, prime ng components. The most important part is the app module has to be updated. You'll see at the very top uh, forms module from Angular Forms is imported because uh, the prime ng has a dependency on that. Next, you'll see uh, the prime ng components are being um, uh, imported as well as the component where we put the custom code. In declarations, the component where we put our custom code is imported and we're also adding prime uh, to the menu under uh, for the routing and at the finally we um, put the prime ng modules um, at the bottom there. And last but not least, we're going to add a link to PrimeNG in the component menu. Now when we run the package, we see that there's a new Prime link. And when we click on that, we go to the page that implements the PrimeNG components. Finally, we're going to look at adding a database and entity framework. For adding a database, We'll right click on the project, we'll select Add, New Scaffolded Item. If we haven't already added the MVC dependencies, we'll be prompted to add them. We'll select Full Dependencies and we'll click Add. It'll be scaffolded. A page will come up indicating that there's some more additional configuration. We'll go ahead and close that for now. Now to make that configuration that we need to do, we'll right click on the project and we'll select Edit the CS Proj file. And inside the csproj file, we're going to add, um, as indicated in the page that have come up, that we'll add um, a reference so that we can have access to the code generation tools. Next, we're going to select Tools and Connect to Database. And we're going to enter the name of a MDF file. This file currently does not exist, so that when we click OK, we'll be prompted to create it. We'll, of course, say yes. The database file will be created. At this point, we can then click on uh, the Server Explorer window, and we'll see the database there. We'll right-click on the Tables node, and we'll select Add New Table. We'll then enter the schema for our new table. In this case, it'll be Weather Forecast, and we'll click the Update button to actually create the table. A screen will pop up and we'll have to click uh, Update Database again. In the Data Tools Operation window, it'll show the progress and it'll indicate when the table has been fully created. We can then right-click on the database file and select Refresh and the table will show. We can then right-click on the table and select Show Table Data. A window will come up and we can enter some sample data. We'll remember to right click on um, the database and select close connection whenever we're not um, editing it. Now we're going to add Entity Framework to the project. We're going to right click on the project node and select Manage NuGet Packages. We're going to search for the Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools package and we'll go ahead and install that. Next we'll go to Tools NuGet Package Manager Package Manager Console, and then we are going to execute the scaffold DB context command, and we're going to point to our uh, database file, and we're going to tell it to output to the models folder. It will then create in the models folder a DB context file as well as a class for our weather forecast table. We're going to go ahead and change the name so that it reads a little bit better to just hello data context. We're then going to remove the on configuring uh, section because that actually does not work with um, uh, ASP.NET Core. Instead, we're going to enter the following constructor so that it works with our dependency injection, which we're going to configure next. We're then going to go to the startup file. We're going to add some uh, using statements. And then in the configure uh, services section, using dependency injection, we're going to indicate that 
um, it should create a uh, data context for us. And we're going to call the use SQL server um, uh, method on options and pass the connection string. However, instead of explicitly putting the connection string in here, we're going to indicate that the connection string is in the configuration and that we'll have a configuration uh, element called hello world uh, data database. Then we'll go to the app settings uh, file and we'll actually add that hello world data database um, element with the connection string, which in this case is pointing to our um, MDF file. However, when we go to production, we'll just change this setting to point to our uh, production database. Now we can right click on the controllers folder and select add new scaffolded item. We can select API controller with actions using entity framework. Now using the drop downs, we can select our weather forecast for the model class and our hello data context for the data context class. Um, indicate weather forecast controller for the name, click add, and we'll automatically get a controller that will have uh, the read, write, uh, delete, and update methods. We can now go to the Angular code and the component that was previously uh, showing uh, weather elements from canned data, we can now point it to um, the API method that we just created, the weather forecast API method we just created. And now when we run the application, it is showing the weather forecast data uh, from the data that we put into the database. In the PowerPoint included, there's links to a full tutorial with code download that we just demonstrated. Also links to uh, finding out more information about JavaScript services, as well as ASP core documentation on how to configure Entity Framework for both a new database and an existing database.